Hi, welcome to Ravensdale Bible Academy. Today's course is fake news. It's from our Think Again Christian series. And today's specific lesson is revisionist history. Now, revisionist history is uh, often used uh, to report fake news. It's, it's kind of the, the way to twist the facts, to revise them to suit your narrative. Uh, especially now when you can take a, a situation and go back 200 years with the lens of today and then change kind of the perspective of, of how uh, history was. And so revisionist history then is, is very dangerous and, and we have to be careful because then all history can be twisted in turn uh, in order to be shaped by you know, the, the person reporting it. And so uh, one of the things I really appreciate about the Bible is the Bible uh, instructs us to, uh, to be diligent studiers of the word, you know, to be like the Bereans, you know, in Acts 17, 11, to, to you know, study God's word, uh, show ourselves as approved workmen, 2 Timothy 2, 5. The Bible doesn't back away from us being, you know, uh, deep studiers of the word and then the bible is brutally honest the heroes in the bible are not sinless the heroes in the bible commit sin they commit murder they make mistakes they rebel against god the nation of israel uh, there's a whole book called judges that that shows israel rejecting and rebelling against god over and over and over again and following false gods and false idols and false ways and so, and so the Bible doesn't hide from its true history. It, it, it gives the real history of how Israel has lived. Now, for us to go back then and say, well, uh, I don't like the way that, uh, you know, the Bible uh, kind of portrays David. Well, that would be revising the, the historical account. We, we have to be careful with that. And what we're seeing today is a lot of news then is picking and choosing well, which, which book do we want to use? Which revived history story do we want to use? So one of my favorite examples is the 1776 commission. Why do we have a 1776 commission? Well, because there's people in America today who don't seem to understand that we became a country in 1776. And so they're trying to go back and revise history, change history. And it's called, one of them is called the 1619 Project, which is a project that essentially is attempting to go back and trace America from its very, very beginning roots to be a completely dominant racist country. Now, as a Christian, as a history student, as a pastor, this is completely offensive and completely fake. First of all, what happened in 1621? Well, this little thing called the Mayflower, this people called the Pilgrims, this thing called Thanksgiving. And so that's the founding of America. The founding of America wasn't a slave ship. It, it, it was a pilgrim ship. And so that, that narrative is completely false and wrong. The other thing is America wasn't America in 1619. Okay, it was under... British occupation, it's been under Spanish occupation, it was been under Mexican occupation, it's been under Russian occupation in Alaska, it's been under Spanish occupation. Um, listen, the history of America took time, took a couple hundred years before the Revolutionary War and before it became an actual country in 1776, not 1619. So very, very dangerous when you try to reframe America as racist when you don't even begin with the right starting point. When you do that, then what you have is people who are getting angry and calling for reparations. So there's a whole movement that America today should pay African American people. Why? Because of slavery. Again, let's, let's think about that for a second. So my ancestors are Mexican. Two generations ago, my people were in Mexico. Should we pay reparations for what happened a hundred years ago? I don't think so. Um, what about the, the Irish? What, uh, what about the Italians that were growing up in America and, you know, and, you know, having it just as hard as, as, as um, you know, some African-Americans? 
What, uh, what about indentured servanthood? What about the 320,000 white men who died freeing African Americans in slavery? What about the fact that America, right down the middle of the country, has this river called the Mississippi River, and west of the Mississippi River, there was never any slavery? And, by the way, you cut it across again, and you had the north and you had the south. The south were the slaveholders, and the, the north were predominantly free states. So, I mean, the, the country itself was not ever all racist. It was never all, you know, dominated by, uh, you know, slavery and the economy of slavery. In fact, most people in the South didn't own slaves. So revisionist history has created an anger and a resentment between African-American people that is continuing on today when this is the best country in the world. For, for blacks to, to live. It's the best country in the world for them to thrive. This is why there's a line and there's people fighting and struggling to get into this country because it's the best. It's not perfect, but it's the best and there's no reason for reparations. In fact, we already gave forms of those right out of the Civil War and in, 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 so we don't need to go backwards. Another example of revisionist history is, look, we, we've got treaties with the Indians. Do you know what 326 is? 326 are the treaties that we have, the, the reservations that are sprinkled throughout America. That means we have 326 individual, unique nations within our country. Why? Because we made treaties with the Indians. 56 million acres. So we didn't steal their land. A lot of the land that we have, we bought. Other land we fought for. And other land we made treaties so that we didn't have to fight. So that we didn't have to bleed. A treaty is when two parties come together in agreement. And, and so not fair to say that we stole it when they made a treaty. And by the way, we've kept that treaty. Please don't revive. Don't change history. This is the true account. Um, when we have... Mayors in major American cities, and, and this is Lightfoot in, in Chicago, saying that segregation lives. That, that's disgusting. There, there's nobody advocating. There, there's, there's no white advocators that are saying that we should have separation of African American people from schools, from, from you know, buses, from hospitals. The only people calling and demanding for separation are, are black Americans, liberal Americans, progressives. And so for the news to report this as though there's some kind of hidden, you know, white supremacist running around is absolutely ridiculous. And just again, a, a revision of history and very dangerous and, and fake news. It's a lie. It's an absolute lie. And so finally, we we see another form of how news can be revived right before our eyes, how, how the, the reframing of things. So in uh, Politico, uh, they forbid using the word crisis when talking about the, the Mexican border. So what you're seeing is right before your eyes, a revision of history. So are we looking at a crisis that's occurring at our southern border or are we just looking at like a, a migration? Are we just looking at what's just a, a, a peaceful transfer of, of, of uh, pioneers? Really reminds me of the book 1984. In the book, right, 1984, they, they, the, the main character of the story, his job was to revive or revise history, to, to reframe it, to change it. And so one of the most despicable ways that our current news media is, is, is lying to us is, is by revising and using revisionist history to report news. So be careful of revisionist history.